Welcome to Mainland Television Regional News. I'm Graham O'Brien and in today's bulletin, do Nelson's business figures stack up? Doors finally close on Wharf business, we meet a young skater who has big plans and more. A new political presence has arrived in town with a new office about to be launched in Stoke for New Zealand First. Chrissy Small went to the Strawbridge Mall to meet the face of the New Zealand First office for the Nelson Regent, Sue Sara, who is Secretary for New Zealand First MP, Richard Prozer. So Sarah, this is an amazing little office right here in the heart of Stoke. This is of course the uh, new office for Richard Prosser who is a, the New Zealand First um, Rangiora representative but also for Nelson I believe. That's correct. I've been Richard's out of office secretary for um, it's close on three years now working from home. So this is going to be a big step forward. Right, okay. So, um, that hasn't officially opened. Um, you're obviously working hard to get it so, and uh, it's obviously had a nice paint job. We've got a fantastic caricature of, of Winston Peters here. Yeah, so I'm extremely proud of that from my um, son-in-law's, the artist, Luke Crystal, and he did that for me, so I was very proud of that, yes. So look, when is the official opening of the office? Yes, well this wasn't even meant to be open this far. Um, I guess if we were a retail it would have been a soft opening, but once the word spread with people passing through the more what was coming in, it was a case of I had to be on site. So this weekend we've got our AGM, New Zealand First AGM in Rotorua, mm -hmm. and I certainly hope to um, get the definite confirmation with Richard and Winston, but tentatively looking at the second week in August at this stage. Right, okay. So what can people expect for the opening? What they can expect is Yes, there's going to be lots of fun. We can expect the leader to be here. Um, I will be making sure he is right here to do the ribbon cutting ceremony, along with Richard, of course. And um, yes, there'll be cake, fun, and um, lots of um, information available to the electorate people. Right, OK. So three years in the job, and you've been the unseen secretary. So you, th is, this is going to be quite a change for you. Oh, a big change, big change. Working from home requires uh, great commitment, you know, it's, you've really got to have, uh, you know, um, everything under control and make sure that there's not, um, you'll be in the middle of a phone call and the dog will start barking and it gets very hard. So this, I am so looking forward to being able to actually be here on that one-on-one -on -one with the public and with the electorate people. So um, it's going to be fantastic. So um, this is the first time Winston Peters has had an office down here in Nelson? It's the first time New Zealand First have had an office down here, yes, right. I believe, yes, yeah. yeah. Well, this is going to be a big change and uh, hopefully um, it'll, it'll uh, make people happy that uh, there's an alternative here. Well, I think from the feedback I've had already, it's such a, it's such a friendly mall, it's fabulous, and the amount of people that have walked through and questioned what was coming in here, and the feedback, and then the word spread, and the next thing they were knocking on the counter and, you who, can you guys speak to you? So, yes, it's definitely going to work, right. definitely. Um, how often will Richard be here in, in, in Stoke? Well, I'm not quite sure. We haven't, of course, finalised all that yet, but it won't only be Richard. This brings the facility now for all the other MPs to come down and meet on um, regarding their portfolios as well, to have a base where they can meet with people with concerns and issues that they need helping out with. Well, Sue, look, we wish you the best of luck for the opening around the 15th of August, and hopefully we'll be here, and, uh, well, Good luck for getting it all ready and having everything organised. I suppose it's a lot to think about. Um, there's an awful lot to think about. I've got um, people arriving at 11 o'clock for further installations and um, set-ups, etc. And still the windows to be done and lots of bits and pieces. But we're here and um, it'll be 20 hours a week to start with and we'll see how we go. And after that it'll just be on from there. This cafe on the wharf at Mapua has now closed its doors for the last time after nine years of servicing the local kids, mums, dads and grand folks, who have spent many memorable times enjoying ice creams, coffee and cake in the wharf's tranquil location. A decision to close was made by the owner Adele Caltro, who was faced with the choice to move on or close. Assessing the costs of both, she chose to shut her doors for the last time on the weekend. Mapua School arrived at the wharf on Friday to farewell Adele by ordering close to 280 ice creams for the children, with many of the children presenting Adele with handmade thank you cards for her nine years of making Hamish's a place for them to be. 
It was mentioned in a tribute to Hamish's that Adele has had a long association with the school as a hard working parent and local business owner, having organised and fundraised to provide a safe seating area for young and old in the grassed area leading to the water. We caught some of Friday's school's visit. How many kids are having ice creams today? Uh, around about 200 and something, oh. 80, 90. Getting up to the 300 mark. Yeah, 300-ish, 300-ish. <laughs> I know the kids will really miss yeah, it. Yeah, they talk the about it all the time it. and their favourite flavours and they so They often on, come down on Fridays and that's sort of the highlight for the end of their week. Adele, that must be some kind of uh, a, a, an audience and a customer base that you'd be wow. sad to see go, oh. go. Oh my gosh, what was it? 287 ice creams have rolled today. <laughs> Thank you so much to Marco School for coming down and supporting our last couple of days in our um, premises where we are at the moment. Um, hopefully we will be able to move to another premises which is more suitable for Hamish's to be. And um, when that does happen we will let everybody know and all of these amazing customers will be back again. Thank you very much Marpur School, your support is overwhelming you and all the rest of the locals. We have been inundated with please stays and what can we do's and the community support is absolutely incredibly amazing and I cannot thank you enough. We are still fighting to get another premises and we're not giving up on that yet, so don't give up on us just yet because we're going to try and keep something here for all you guys because we know that it's a very important part of a community. And so keep watching this space and we'll keep doing it because we know that you guys want it, so we're going to keep trying. Okay? If you do, Adele will be there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So thank you very much. Sunday was the last day for Hamish's before the doors of the business closed and the weather cleared up enough for some of the children to enjoy the bouncy castle provided by Adele for the final day of trade. Chrissy Small was there for coffee and caught up with some of the people whose lives had been enriched by the business. How does it feel to be here on the last day working? Sad. Upsetting. Yeah, very sad considering this is the only place that the kids have to come and Adele's yeah. always kept the prices low that's so the average family can afford. Um, it's just not going to be the same. No. It's just not no. going to be. And she's worked so hard over the 10 years to ensure that the prices have been kept low. She also knows 80% of the kids' names around yeah. here. Yeah. Over 80%. Nobody else, yeah. nobody else does. She's yeah. very much part of the community and it's a, it's a, it's a loss and a robbery if you, if you ask us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's, it's, it's gutting and just what he's trying, like even the area out here taking the tree out. It's like, and I, that, it's just horrible. The yeah. kids are going to be able to come down here on a hot summer's day and, yeah. And there's been a lot of tears and yeah. she's also, Adele's also helped the communities and she's employed 12 of us here. And she's also employed a lot of mothers and she's given us flexi time so we can work. And as well as some of the teenage girls that wouldn't necessarily get a chance, yeah. she's taught them, you know, lots yeah. of skills. And there's not a lot of companies that are, would do that. There's not. Yeah. And she looked we at get people. along with each other as well. Like yeah, we everyone do. Gets along. We're we one do. big family here yeah. at Hamish's. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we are. We still will be. I'm here with Terry, who's been a customer of Hamish's since what? Since Almost the, from the beginning, anyway. Almost from the beginning. He comes out every weekend to have his lunch here and to just enjoy the ambiance of what Hamish's has got happening here at the wharf. Terry, how do you feel about the fact that the, it's all going to change as of this weekend? It's the last last chance to, to enjoy Hamish's. Yeah, I'm deeply disappointed. Um, it's the highlight of my Sunday coming out here. Uh, they've always treated me as a friend rather than a customer. Yeah. Almost like a, a big family. It's, yeah. it's a brilliant atmosphere. No, no matter how you feel, you feel better when you leave here. Yeah. Now, Terry, you know, you've probably eaten at other establishments around the place and everything. What brings you back here other than the, the, the ambiance? Is, are the prices good? The prices have always been very, very reasonable. Um, they treat me very well. <laughs> um, yes, the, the service is brilliant, the people are wonderful, and the food is good as well. You just can't ask for anything better on a sunny afternoon 
This is a marvellous, relaxing, laid-back place to be. So, Terry, what are you going to do now that Hamish is, is closing its doors for the last time? I'm going to have to take my scooter and scout round the area and see what I can find that's somewhat comparable. I don't think I'll be very successful for a while. You don't think you'll come back here when the brewery expands into this area? I'm not in, interested in the brewery side of it at all. I'm not a drinker. <laughs> but um, I'm disappointed that a family area like this is going to go to the brewery side of it. Right. Were you aware that uh, Hamish was, was here before the brewery in this building? Uh, yes. Yes, I was. Yes. OK, well, Terry, look, I hope you can find somewhere as, as, as nice as this. I'm, I think you'll be pushing it, though. I think I will, but I'll do my best, and I'll, I'll keep track of all the people here as well. They'll always be friends. Tasman Mayor Richard Kempthorne spoke to Chrissy about Hamish's closing and future plans for the wharf. Richard, we've just, um, this weekend, we saw the closure of Hamish's cafe um, on the wharf at Mapua. Um, what are Council's thoughts on that whole episode? Well, if you go back uh, two years at least ago, <clears throat> it was quite clear that with the relationship between uh, Yorbertons and Matringa at the time, uh, and there were contracts given, that is where Hamish's, it was identified Hamish's were not going to be able to stay in that block. So since there, which is two years ago, Council has been working on a development plan for the wharf and with Hamish's to give them a location at, at good rates in the new premise so that they did have somewhere to go. Right, I believe, um, so Council's hands are really tied over this contract, contractual agreement between the previous uh, building owner and the brewery, is that right? Yeah, absolutely. The contract had been signed and sealed before the Council ever was involved. Right, okay. So how does Council feel now that um, Adele's now made the decision to leave? Must leave a bit, bit of a sad... Well, it is a bit sad because the council, we have worked for a long time uh, trying to help uh, Hamish's to have a location and to be there and to help Adele. But, you know, we're not there to make her do anything. It's, that's completely up to Adele whether she wants to go into the new premise or not. And she has made it quite clear probably over the last six months or so. And I know in a conversation that I had with her personally that actually it was all getting a bit difficult and she had decided to uh, not continue long term. Right. Now... So, so that's her choice and we respect that. Yes. Now, uh, OK, the vision of the wharf. That's, that's all going to change in, in the near future, I believe, with the, the new development going in. Uh, well, it, it's not going to change radically. I mean, we used to have the aquarium there and so the design of the new building has been done so that it fits in with the amenity of the wharf and so what what we looked at and if you go back over probably a year or more is to say once the um once that site was clear what when the aquarium was burnt down <coughs> was there the need to have a, a building there and it was felt actually for the benefit of mapua and the waterfront that it would be really good to have one so it's been designed to be in keeping and fitting with the waterfront Mm -hmm. and, um, that's, and that's the basis for the development. Right, okay. And I believe um, this whole development is in consultation with uh, the local business association and the residents association. So there is a lot of local input. There's been a lot of local input, yes. Mm. Well, well, we'll watch this space and see what happens down there at the wharf. Following a story last week on nationwide television about the benefits of free parking in Nelson, I went along to get a bit more detail on some of the information given. I spoke with CEO of Chamber of Commerce, Dot Kittle, about the interview she gave. On the Paul Henry show um, last week, it was very surprising with the figures that you, you gave out and some of the information you gave out. Um, you agreed that free parking was a gift to the retailers and residents and that there is no downside due to the increase in fee in the second hour to $1.50. Oh, I think what I was trying to say is that actually our local government has worked quite closely with the retailers and the business sector to try and reinvigorate the inner city and the free parking for one hour has certainly been an initiative that has shown some really good results. Uh, certainly our feedback from retailers is that anecdotally uh, their uh, traffic 
and uh, so that's the foot traffic and also their growth, 60% are reporting an increase. So that's incredible. So 60% of our retailers say there's been a benefit from the one hour free parking. And the latest stats that came out through the Nelson Tracking the Economy also showed that actually retail spend in the Nelson Tasman region is up almost double from any other region. So we're up something like 9%, whereas the average growth for the country was only around 4.9%. Um, do you think that it came across wrongly on the Paul Henry show then? Because I, I've listened to it, obviously, yes. and it comes across that there's a 60% increase in turnover of foot traffic and turnover revenue, and Paul Henry did question that. Do you think that you got that a little bit... I'm just trying to get it here because I've, I've watched it. Do you think it yeah. got a, you, you got it a bit wrong there on that interview? All right, so on one side of the coin, the council are missing out on some revenue. On the other yes, side of are. the coin, they are supporting the vibrancy of the CBD. Anecdotally, what has this done to the retailers? What has it done for the retailers? It's been a huge boom, so retailers say 60% growth in both in traffic numbers and in turnover. So that's a huge boost for a challenging Sorry, retail sector. Sorry, 60% growth. 60% growth in foot traffic and in revenue. So that's retailer feedback. Uh, so pay mark figures maybe not so strong, but certainly it has seen an increase. But the biggest impact has been the positive sense of council and business working together to revitalise the inner city. Now that's anecdotally, and I was quite clear about that. So we don't have the actual hard stats that prove that. But what we have got is the hard stats that show there's an increase greater in our region of retail spend than an increase in any other region. So that's really, really good news. So what we're seeing is anecdotally, yes, we've got growth in foot traffic and in turnover, and that's backed up by the payment. Not as strongly, but still backed up to show that we have had good growth. So it's a, it's, it's a win-win, in my view. Um, but aren't you quoting the, these figures of how good that uh, free parking is going and that, that we got a 4.9% increase in revenue. Isn't that from the Nelson Tasman figures, yet you're using yes. yet you're using Nelson free parking as in saying how good it is, but we wouldn't know because it's lumped all together with, with Nelson and Tasman. So some of, the, some of the figures you can separate out, but you're absolutely right that increase in retail spend is across the region as a whole. So what do we put that down to? Uh, a number of things. The one hour free parking is certainly a factor. The other is the increase in tourism activity, certainly a factor. The third is also the the fact that we have seen development out, re good retail development out at Richmond, and so that will have been a factor as well. Uh, and then there's just general business confidence. So the more people that are confident, the more they'll be spending. And our region hasn't been as hard hit as some other regions. So you're absolutely right. Which which bit is attributed to which bit? Very hard to say. And that's where that sort of qualitative or that anecdotal evidence becomes quite important in terms of the richness and understanding what lies behind those information, what lies behind that data. Um, you will, frankly for me, rather than anecdotal information, I'd like to see the paymark figures for Nelson City so that we can say free parking, Nelson City, this was the rate rise. Yeah. Many people are saying that we're being lumped into Richmond. Richmond's on the rise. Nelson's lagging behind. The figures don't really show what's going on in Nelson, and it's a big worry for a lot of people. Yeah, I don't agree that uh, Nelson's on the lag. Certainly in my view, I think actually both regions are performing well uh, and they're doing well together. And there will be times when Richmond you know, looks a bit better or Nelson looks a bit better, but the thing is actually as a region as a whole, how do we support and accentuate the positives for both regions? How do we make sure that our inner city and Nelson is vibrant? And at the same time, how do we grow Motawaka and how do we grow Richmond and make sure that wherever you live in our region, wherever you're visiting in our region, you're getting good customer service, you're getting quality experiences, and you've got a range of offerings that suit whatever you're wanting to do. Samsung have reissued a top loader washing machine product recall 2013 for washers that pose a fire risk after identifying an electrical issue affecting four Samsung washing machine models. They were manufactured between February 2010 and February 2013. Check if your model is one of the four by looking at the barcode on the back of your machine. If you have any worries about this machine, please call the safety hotline on the number provided. Last time we spoke to young Nelson girl Zahn Twizzle, she was off to Australia for competitions. I caught up with Zahn again this week on how that went and her next big plans in the international speed skating world. Zahn, thanks very much for coming in and joining us again. Thanks. Um, you're up to some pretty exciting stuff, but we'll just we'll just hold that off for a minute. And can you just tell us, last time you came in, you were fundraising to go to the Australian Championships. Can you tell us a little bit about what happened? Um, well, not many Australians had been put forward to be in the competition. And so there were about 
two, three or maybe four in each category, which isn't really worth going to Australia to compete for. So it got called off because everybody just pulled out. Yeah. Oh, that's no good. And how, how did you feel about that? You trained up pretty hard and yeah. you raised the funds. Yeah, I was training really, really hard. And yeah, it was really annoying. Okay, and um, and how about any other competitions after that? I mean, you train hard. Did you did you um, manage to go into any other competitions? Um, there was the tour of the top of the south, which was just a competition in New Zealand and Blenheim, but people from Timaru came up to do it as well. And um, I came sixth in that because I was at the bottom of my age group, which is twelve to fifteen. Okay. And we also did the Nelson Winter Speed League, and I came first in that. Uh, overall. Wow, yeah. yeah, nice work. So all that training paid off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so what's your, now tell us about your exciting next plans. Um, in three and a bit weeks I'm going to Luixi in China to compete in international opens and um, I've been training really, really hard for quite a while. <laughs> I bet. That. Yeah. And um, how's your, I know you're fundraising, so yeah. how, how's that going? Um, it's been going really well. I've met my goal of $3,000, wow. but all of the money I raise after that goes towards the skating club because at the end of the year we have to get our team to the North Island to compete. Sure, I mean, yeah, fundraising never stops, does it? No. And are you going to China by yourself? Is this your big trip at 13 years old to China? Yeah, um, I'm going, nobody else from Nelson is coming, but some other people from the New Zealand team are going as well. Wow, fantastic. Yeah. Your dad's not going to go and carry your bags or anything? No. Ah. They're coming down to Christchurch with me because that's, that's where the team is leaving from. But the, from there I'm just going on my own. Fantastic, wow. And um, how do you think, what do you think about China? I mean, we know that the Chinese, whatever they do, they, they do it well, they train hard. Have you heard yeah. much about their training and, and, and your times compared to their yeah. times? I've heard that they train six hours a day every day, which is really, really intense because I only train maybe two or two and a half hours a day for six days a week. Um, which is still huge though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's quite tiring. But um, we, the sort of best people in New Zealand, usually um, in the grade that I'm in, usually come sort of top to middle of the range, sometimes come first, but usually sit around sort of middle-ish upper area. Sure. And yeah. so so what's your goals for going to China? Just like have a really good experience and get some personal bests and if I'm really lucky I might bring back some medals in New Zealand. Yeah. Very <laughs> nice. Um, and uh, yeah and can you just tell us a little bit more um, your fundraising, who's helped you, how, how have you done it? Um, I've been really, really lucky because all of my parents like um, have been helping sharing the, my Give Little page around and my relatives, my parents, friends, my friends and some local businesses have helped me get to my goal in less than a week. Well, in less than a week? Yeah. Well, <laughs> Oh, that's fantastic. Well, it's great to see that we have such talent in Nelson going all the way to China at 13. Great to see that you can raise the money that people want to give to you. Um, is there anything you'd like to say? Um, just like really thank you to people that have donated because if you think about it, it's a really lot of money, $3,000, and it's like really, really helpful that people have helped me raise that money. So that's really good. Great, Zan, thanks yeah. very much and best of luck and we hope to see you when, and we'll see you when you come back. Thank you. Cheers. On Saturday morning, properties in the Motueka Valley, Rewalker, Takaka Hill and surrounding areas lost power. Network Tasman reported a feeder fault had caused a loss of power that caused the outage for around an hour. The power outage also caused problems for many services including mainland TV's broadcast site. Network Tasman has also advised customers in these areas that during August there will be four planned shutdowns and again this will affect mainland TV's broadcast throughout the region. After the break, we'll bring you the latest weather update and some events and happenings coming up from around the region. Edward Gibbon, the bathroom specialist, have a great range of bathroom ideas at their showroom at 23 McGlashan Ave in Richmond. Call in and check out some of the latest bathroom designs and fittings. Edward Gibbon, the bathroom plumbing and drainage supply specialist, 23 McGlashan Ave, Richmond. Now I'm Francis from Nelson Auto Glass. We repair all auto glass, stone chips, windscreen replacements, scratch removal. 
If you have an auto glass issue, our team will sort it. Nelson Auto Glass Specialist, 84 Vanguard Street, Nelson. Welcome to Smugglers Pub and Cafe, open seven days a week with free parking all day. Our lunch menus have that fat old fashioned flavour where we treat you like treasure with the food you'll savour. We cater for children, grannies and granddads too, with special rates and privileges given to the elderly lunchtime crew. Our staff are friendly and kind and want to see you all come back time after time. Time. Daytime or evening, it doesn't matter. Give us a call on 546 4084 and we'll be happy to spoil ya. Eighty-eight point one, the shed. We're the team at JCAR, right here in Nelson, 120 Hardy Street. Our shop is full of electronic items, including security alarm systems, electronic components, solar and power, electronics toys, sound systems, cables, and much, much more. Jacob. 120 Hardy Street, Nelson. Victory 60 Plus is on Tuesdays at 1.30 through to 3.30pm at 238 Upper Vanguard Street. You can join in for cards, games and a cuppa. On behalf of the team here at Mainland Television News, thank you for joining us once again. We are now taking a holiday news break for winter and we will return back to your screens on the 7th of September to bring you more news and events from around the region. You can still contact us with your stories and notices through our email address. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air. G'day, it's your old mate the Mad Butcher and you're watching Mainland TV. Edward Gibbon, the bathroom specialist, have a great range of bathroom ideas at their showroom at 23 McGlashan Ave in Richmond. Call in and check out some of the latest bathroom designs and fittings. Edward Gibbon, the bathroom plumbing and drainage supply specialist, 23 McGlashan Ave, Richmond. Welcome me hearties to Smuggler's Pub and Cafe, famous for hearty meals, craft owls and a friendly service way. Sensational seasonal menus with meals all day and evening too, or sell in for a snack with special menus for young smugglers and you. Settle in for a jolly old time, relax and enjoy our award winning dining and lovely fine wine. Decked out in an old worldly way, we're open seven days. Book or come on in to 8 Muratai Street, not far from a beach walk or swim, phone 5464-08. World War I was a defining period in our history, impacting greatly on the lives of people from the Nelson province. Memories of the First World War is an exhibition which will be displayed in a number of regional venues and is currently on at the Nelson Provincial Museum. Nelson Tire Centre. Great prices, great service. Buy your own Bryford trailer. All types, all sizes. See Colin Douglas for your tires and batteries. I'm Larry London from VOA Music Mix, bringing you news on the hour from around the world, plus music 24-7, from the latest hits to those classic favorites to jazz on Saturday mornings, plus much, much more. You can contact us by Googling Mainland TV or follow us on Facebook. Cheers from the team at Mainland Radio 1 and VOA Music Mix.